Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Namiyo Kite Kure, or Wave Listen to Me, episode 3. I know that we're up through, like, episode 5 being released right now. I'm way behind, I, know, I understand. Um, but we're just gonna watch episode 3 today, because I'm still going to consider this a treasure hunting show. I'm still not sure that I'm sold on it. Um, some people have said that episode 3 is, like, the first episode where we really get an understanding of what the core loop of the show is going to be what it's going to feel like in the future uh so i'm going to give it a watch and see if i like it or see if i want to drop it and whether i whether i drop it, 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 it if i drop it it won't be because i don't like it it'll be because there's not enough to love in it um and there's a distinction but we'll get to that if we get to it i'm not sure that i will drop it this episode could completely convince me otherwise and and make me fall more in love with these characters and whatnot but uh we'll see so our girl, she's doing doing some radio stuff. Last episode, we had some some focus on this weird festival thing, and a very strange story about the the soup stock that that was passed down by by his master. But it's actually shitty soup, and he's better at making it himself. So they only use it for these these special festivals, so that his master feels proud, which is fun and weird. Um, and we continued doing some development on the character side of things for for our main girl and the rest of the crew and stuff. So I'm kind of expecting that we're going to move more into the doing the radio thing and trying to balance life and such. But I really don't know what to expect from this episode. And it doesn't help that it's been quite a while since I watched the last one. So all we can really do is dive on into episode three of Nami Yoki Te Kure and see if we like it. So I've got episode three up and ready to go. It's zero seconds. There'll be two versions of this reaction. You can find a picture in picture version with the video up there linked in the description. Tire based version will be up on YouTube. If you would like to do a syncy thing, sync up your own copy of the episode with the tire based version, you are welcome to do so. Just get your copy ready because the beep beep timer to count you down will be coming at you now. <sighs> That's a cool shot. Is this the dude who lives in the same building as her? Why is he putting things in each corner of his room? Bottled water? Okay. Some form of ceremony. Ha. Who the hell is Ritsuko? Mm -hmm. That was a very weird sequence. What was with the blood dripping from the ceiling? Or was that imagined? And I wonder if the chant that he was doing is recognizable, because I didn't recognize it. My first guess would be a dead wife, but I don't know. <laughs> Whoops. Shit. All right, so we're losing our job. <laughs> oh. 
why are they, why are they, I don't get it. Why are they mosaic <laughs> Just your last paycheck, no bonus. Oof. Yes. Ah. Just posing there. <laughs> so she thinks she's getting fired because because of sexual discrimination. <laughs> so that he can so that he can hire uh, another dude. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Drink too much? Yeah. Hey, maybe radio. Thanks, bud. You're the best. <laughs> Promised by who? Yeah. <laughs> who? Ah. Uh, okay. Yikes. Yikes. Yeah, what can you even say? Well, she's, she's insane, so. Uh. Going to to lover like activities. That I, I don't. Zenra is a great name. I give you a week. <laughs> See you in a week. Yep. Yep. Sorry, bud. <laughs> Mm. The best bed. <laughs> Run a simulation. You had an offer. Who's here? Uh. 
Um, <laughs> you're in his apartment you're in his apartment oh my god yeah yeah you barged in and fell asleep on his floor It's really fucking annoying. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> my understanding of myself is, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, bye guys. His room is shockingly empty, by the way. Okay, so they don't know that the other works at the radio station, right? Hey, storage is a roof. That was a transition. <laughs> All packed up. <laughs> Everything. All right. <laughs> what? Of glass mask. I, uh, if I remember correctly, that's, uh, hey, it's a hardcore shoujo stuff. All these names. Yeah, but she's already... <laughs> Sound high tide. Is that where a wave comes from? One of your most popular programs. You'll have your own segment. Your own program. Whoa. Oh. Thank you for the little explanation. <laughs> it's radio, dude. <laughs> Stay chill. Good, because you won't. <laughs> Got her.
I love the shot. Money. Huh? <laughs> Why is it? Why is it mosaic? I love the lighting, the edge lighting on him. Sponsors. Mmm. Okay. Kind of. You've got what it takes. What's that? What is that? Just a hunch? Oh, is she the fam the famous ah oh, his favorite female comedian? You you talk like her too. Okay. From whom? Every day. Is it right in the middle of the day? Three th oh. It's hyper late night. But <laughs> that's a terrible time slot. I love it. Hey. Hey. We got a roomie. <laughs> hey, cheap wine is cheap. But it's still one. Does the trick. She's a weird one. I don't think she's pretending. Oh, turtles. That's why the turtles were telling us stuff. Also... Voice actress. Is that... It's not Hanakana, right? I don't think so. 
It's somebody I know, though. I think. Hmm. Right. Why does she find that funny in this moment? Oh. Oh. <laughs> he made it seem a lot more serious in order to pull her in. Smart. Hmm. There's our title drop. forgiving No, you're pretty funny. Aww. Aww. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, forever's a little a bit of a long time. Hmm. Huh? Listen to the show that you're going to be taking a part of. Ah. So just late night music and white noise and the jingle MRS. Yeah, you'd be all alone. Is this her first day? Oh, no, we're jumping to ED. That episode went by pretty quickly. That was fun. So work life, find out more about find out more about radio as a business, find and meet more characters who are involved in it. Interact with blonde mohawk guy and are kind of weird not they they won't romance that's there. It's like it's there in the subtext, but it's weird. Huh.
Okay, 30 seconds left. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. So yeah, by the author, of course. You can tell by the style. Super pretty. Super pretty. And the consistency of the, the lines for the bricks is really good, too. Even, even the fact that when there are pairs of lines to create the, the, the feeling of mortar in between the bricks, they, as, we, as we go off toward the like top and right as we're fading out, uh, the lines get closer and closer together. You can see where, where individual parts of those lines have been drawn with rulers, and then he's moved the ruler and started the line again. You can see, like, right here, if you track uh, directly down from her wrist, from where her, her sleeve ends, if you track directly down, you can see this point here, where the lines have, like, stopped, and then the, the ruler has been moved, and then the next line has been drawn. That's kind of cool. But just, just to, to create all of that is really awesome. Really amazing understanding of graphite. And I, I, I would assume multiple types of pencils, like mechanicals for these sharp lines on the on the brick. These feel much, much thicker. And maybe maybe even softer lead for the, the hair specifically. These big thick lines that are scratchy and scrapey and dark. This is really nice. Okay. As are all of the frames that we get in the ED from him. All really cool. Overall thoughts on the episode, though, this is a weird one, but a fun one. Um, this episode flows really well. I don't know what the hell this opening sequence is, or who the character he's talking to is. Ritsuko, I'm going to work. He's saying goodbye to someone. There is a photo. It's the one, the only thing in his room that's like personal everything seems to be either like pragmatic or empty except for that one photo on the dresser we don't really see what it is and he goes ahead pours out a glass of water holds his prayer beads chants a chant i'm gonna look up pieces of the chant hold on the heart sutra oh it's the sutra that contains form is empty emptiness is form the sunyata has to do deeply with mu and stuff, and the fundamental emptiness of form, two truths, all that jazz. Okay, so it is it is a legitimate Buddhist uh, mantra, sutra, sorry, difference. But it doesn't have like a specific context for it, like romantic or for uh, a loss or something. It's just a prayer and I guess stealing himself. But I don't know what for. Weird. Okay. So we find out that he lives below her, as we know. But he has also been responsible for the fact that every time she comes home blackout drunk, her shoes are placed properly and she is put in bed properly. Now, why are there weird, uh, mosaicked out things throughout this episode? Like, what, what is being censored on these lollipops? Is it the logo? Is it the candy itself? Is there something untoward here going on? I don't know. Why is the little the little thing that the the head of the studio holds up? Why is that thing mosaic censored as well? No idea. Okay, so they chat. We talk about some goofy stuff. Uh, reveal that she thinks that he's keeping him around because boys, and not keeping her around because not boys, which is great. And he eventually kind of reluctantly, kind of like trepidatiously offers to let her stay at his place, which of course has an undertone. And she flips the fuck out at, about it until he's like, I, I, it doesn't even have to be like sex or like loverly things. Okay. Yeah, it does. But yeah, she tries to deflect and this whole conversation, this whole interaction is really good. Um, 
or I think it's really good. It all flows super well. It's goofy. It's fun. It's funny. But it also tells us a lot about the relationship between these characters. And then this whole sequence is super well done with her just muttering on the floor, uh, a, a faceless pair of feet that we do not recognize, not knowing what's going on. And then we have this moment and he feels as awkward about this as she does. But of course, once she realizes what's going on, triggered and she flip dip wibbity wop suplexes monkey throw whatever boom ow and calls the cops at which point the truth comes out and she realizes that she has been making this guy's life difficult for like a year <laughs> awful uh awesome little random matrix reference for no reason cool love it good stuff never get to see what's on that picture but then we have yeah this <laughs> and in her desperation she tries to find out if she can get a part-time job sitting his house amazing but eventually in that desperation same desperation she is forced to go back to the radio station they talk some stuff out talk some things through the offer is made she's freaked out by it but we talk it out there are some really great cuts, great shots in in this. Lots of still pans and stuff, but things like framing only the reflection on the table is really nice, and, and jumping from that to the reality is really nice, too. There are a lot of good things. A lot of warped perspective, too. Like, this is weird. Everything warps around around the frame. All right, so that's the, the comedian that he's super into. And he trusts in her because she reminds me, reminds her of him, reminds him of her. But the slot that he's giving her is 3.30 a.m., which is fucked. But we have a friend. We have a female friend in our life. And she's kind of like a complete opposite to our character. She finds her funny. She's She seems a little bit more like, I wouldn't say naive, but generally positive and less cynical than our main character, which is really nice. And they're they're starting to get around really well. Or get along really well, which is really cool. And through her, she can find out some of the joys of radio and some of the cool things that could be going on here, which is awesome. And, of course, she instills things with her own her own thoughts about boyfriends and such. And eventually... Yeah, you're voicing the thoughts in my own head. She's got something. Something freeing, you know? I really like this little moment where she sings the little jingle like a child. That's super cute. There's like, there's a love for what she's doing here. It's really cool. And she's listening to their own product, you know? But at the same time... This also raises the challenge for, for Minari. Like, how are you going to actually do a 3.30 a.m. show? How are you going to find another job to do as well? How are you going to get sponsors and make money off of this thing? It's challenging, and there's a, there are a lot of steps to the process, and it's totally unfamiliar to her. So this puts us in a really cool spot. I, I, I like this a lot. Okay. Now, there's, there's uh, two other things that I want. One of them is I just want to look up Glass Mask. Just to make sure that it is what I think it is. Glass mask. Japanese shoujo manga, 49 Tonkoban volumes. Yeah, it's it's a big old, huge old shoujo manga. Cool, got it. Uh, and one that is referenced pretty heavily, I believe, in Penguin Drum, which is why I know about it. Cool. And then I wanted to look at... I picked one specific shot for it because it, it was uh, pretty clear. But I want to look at the lip flaps. Because something, something seemed weird about them. Okay, so a couple things. One, the flaps themselves are really well timed. However, I mean they're really well timed. Uh, each, each, every time she has a sh or a s, her teeth show. Right, we get this this piece, because because normally lip flaps you have a, a reusable set, right? So for this sequence at this angle, we've got a set of lips that we're using for her mouth. There's this open, the fully closed, the open and more like O shaped, right? O or ah. 
ah, as as her lips get pulled out to the sides here. M p, right? S sh. It's really good. But once we get here, where she starts smiling more, and her eyes her eyes close, right? We add these weird these weird little curls that aren't right. This little curl at the very corner of her lip, it's not quite right. And then we have this little curl here. And what happens when they're actually put in with each other, as we jump around, the corners of her lips constantly go like this. Which is, which is not how we look when we're talking. Whether we're smiling or not, if we're smiling, we keep that engaged, right? We're, we're kind of holding the corners up. They don't really come together and purse like this, right? But they do for her. It's weird. And then they curl up more when she opens her mouth. It's weird. It's just a little bit off. And at full speed, we see it. It like a part of her mouth appears that isn't there and then disappears and then appears and then disappears. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm I'm just weird for noticing something like this. But it's very strange because I think the way that they're doing lip flaps are fantastic. They're really detailed. There's a lot of emphasis on making the 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 side of her her cheek um i'm sorry it would be this side for me as i'm as, as i'm speaking you can see that this side of my cheek moves around a lot and it it gets shaped and this cheekbone gets gets shaped and the side of my jaw moves around and this side of my face is not static but in a lot of anime what you'll get is static drawn face and then the the mouth and lips go but i can't do that they just they just go like this right and the jaw doesn't move so there's all this detail being added in and that's really cool. But the way that it jumps between them looks funky. I don't know. And it made me start noticing all of the lip flaps in the show are really detailed. And intentionally so. All of them. Like in, in almost every shot where there's a character speaking, they've got these really detailed lip movements going on. And they're unique. They're, they're, they, they create a set for each scene. For the most part, now, I'm sure that there are some some basics that they have for basic angles, like straight on for main character, profile for main character, things like that, that they've held on to. But man, they're doing a lot of extra little bits of work to make all of that as detailed as it is, and that's cool. Okay, so just a random thing that I noticed and wanted to point out because I think it's kind of neat and a little bit weird, but... uh I think I, I appreciate the detail being put into it more than I find any of the little tiny wonkiness of it wonky. Does that make sense? I don't find it terribly off-putting. Okay, cool episode. I think I like this a lot. Uh, this, felt, this felt really good. It was, it was goofy at a number of points. It was wholesome at a number of points. And it feels like we're getting involved in, in the radio thing in a way that's really interesting. And we're meeting characters who are genuinely into it. Uh, and that's important to get us into it. So that's cool. Oh, no, I think this was a good episode, and I think I'm I'm willing to say that I will watch more Nami Yoki Tekure. I don't know when, but I'm willing to say that I'll watch more. Okay, we'll end there. Uh, I, I got a lot of things that I want to get rendered and uploaded, so I will end here and uh, say peace to y'all, and I will see you maybe next week for another episode or two of Nami Yoki Tekure. Again, it's like three episodes ahead of where I am right now, so it'll be a, a, a chore to catch up, but we'll figure it out. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll feel up to it in the next couple of days and I'll just watch a couple episodes back to back, but we'll see. Keep an eye out. Um, yeah, Mitsubu, this Namiyoki Tekure. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you next time. Peace.